Okay, 2 Kings 23, we are talking about a good king in Judah, Josiah. And we're continuing on about him. And the king sent, and they gathered him all the elders of Judah. These are the official heads, people in charge, and of Jerusalem. So these are the spokesmen of the children of Israel in Judah. And the king went up unto the house of the Lord, that's the temple, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him. So he's making the temple, the house of the Lord, he's making it the, the meeting house. Of all places to meet, let's meet before God. And the priests and the prophets. So there are prophets. And there are priests. And all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. Now notice when we go back to chapter 22, verse 8. The high priest, Hilkiah, has been given, has found the book of the law, and he has read it. And in verse chapter, uh, uh, verse 10, the book is given to the king, and in verse 11, the book is read to the king. And the book is taken to a prophetess, verse 14. What's going on? What's God have to say? And the prophetess speaks, verse 15 to 20, chapter 22. Chapter 23, the king gets the word. And the thing, he, he calls all the people, all the priests, all the elders, everybody together at the, at the house of the Lord, the temple, and he has the words of God, the law, read to the people. I would extremely doubt, with all the network, tele cable televisions, and all the channels that man can get today, I seriously doubt that any president now or in the future would ever stand before the people of the world and read the Bible and say, we need to get right. Because they make the presidents gods. But the king stands up, he says, causes all the people to hear the words of the Lord. The book is no more lost, it is found. And the king stood by a pillar. It's a pillar, not a particular pillar. And made a covenant, that means an agreement, before the Lord. He stands at the pillar, he's at the temple. He turns to the Lord, That is, he's turned towards the west where the mercy seat is. Though he's got the brazen altar, he's got the, the wash basin, laver, he's got a veil, he's got the, the table of showbread, he's got the candlestick, he, some, maybe the incense altar. Or that's not in the other. He's got a veil. And he's got a mercy seat. He turns to that God and says, We're going to serve you. We're going to do right. To walk after the Lord. That means God is going ahead of them. You walk after the Lord. You go where the Lord goes. And to keep his commandments, Old Testament, and his testimonies, Old Testament. His statutes, not church age, with all their heart. Oh, look at that. Romans chapter 10, with the heart man believes on the righteousness. Old Testament, 2 Kings, in the law. You still had a heart issue. It's a heart issue since Adam and Eve. That's how you judge if somebody's saved or not. It's what their heart. That's how you judge somebody, by their heart. That's how God, God told told uh, Samuel when Samuel's looking at the sons of Jesse look how great these boys are he said no 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 man look is on the outward appearance but I look on the heart you look on the outward appearance you look on feelings and all that you'll be against God when you look at their heart and what the Bible says then you'll be on God's side and all their soul that's your eternal you that's of you that lives forever. 
I know right now if you're to die, they put your, your body in a grave, they put your body in ashes, they put your body somewhere. But that soul lives on. And right now, though bodies are in graves, bodies are under the sea, bodies are wherever they've died and gone and, and maybe evaporated by certain accidents and natural disasters. That soul is still living today, whether it be in heaven or it be in hell. Your body will catch up later, whether it be in heaven or hell. To perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book, The law is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All five books. And all the people stood to the covenant. They, they rise up. That means we adhere to you, King. We adhere to God. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest. He's in charge of the temple. He's the one that will go in that, that once a year, twice, beyond the veil the Day of Atonement, and the priests of the second order, there are different orders, David set up, and by that, if you're in a study, you can probably tell what time this, this is at, and the keepers of the door, we call them ushers, to bring forth out of the temple the Lord, all right, all the vessels that were made for Baal, and for the grove, and for all the hosts of heaven, and he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kedron, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. Now let's look at chapter 21, 21. Chapter 21, verse 21. And this is about Amon. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in, and served the idols that his father served, and worshipped them. And he forsook the Lord God of his fathers. Amon has put it all back. Now, you remember we talked about Manasseh got rid of the gods. He got rid of the altars. But he didn't destroy them. And we talked about maybe putting the story, said it, put it up in the attic or something. Look what Josiah does. He burned them. You ain't going to use it no more. He took the ashes and he scattered the ashes. You were not even going to think about this no more. And he put down the idolatries. That's the only place that word shows up. Priest. Who have Baal. Who have altars. Who have groves. And their idolatrous priests... They call it aids to worship priest. Whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense. This said, now, like I said, they, more, they know more than I do, but this says B.C. 624. 624 years before Jesus Christ is born. You've got the Catholic Church right there. There it is. Don't give me, we're the universal church built upon the apostles and Jesus Christ. You're built before. To burn incense in the high places. That's the first time high places shows up for Josiah. It's been high priest, high priest. The first time high places show up for him, he's destroying them. In the cities of Judah. And in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal. Now watch this. Here we go. To the sun. That's worshiping the sun. That's what it says. Sunrise service. Has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. B.C. 624. And Jeremiah is going to be talking about those that sit towards the sun rising and worship. That cockapelli bull that comes out of the bull that the Catholic Church called bull. That's what, the, that's what the order of the Catholic Church is called a bull. We got something new. We're going to worship Jesus Christ as the sun comes up. That's not nothing new. Here it is. To the moon. 
the moon goddess, Ashtoreth. Baal is the sun, Ashtoreth is the woman. She's got 28 days cycle. And to the planets, that's the only time that word shows up. They knew something about, listen, we are reverencing Mars and sent ships out to Jupiter and Saturn. They were doing that BC 624 too. They weren't sending out rocket ships, but they were, ooh, that's a god. Do you know that all the planets in our solar system but the Earth is named for a god or goddess? Neptune, Pluto. And they will say they have no idea who named the Earth. I do. God did. In the beginning, God created that heaven and the Earth. There it is. Earth is not named for a God. All right. And to all the hosts of heaven. All right. Now, I've been saying the hosts of heaven has been the stars. Sun. We know what that is. Moon. We know what that is. Planets. We know that. What's the only thing else out there that could be the host of heaven but the stars? There it is. Host is also in the Bible. God's host would be the angels. Revelation 1 says that the mystery of the seven stars are the seven angels of the churches. Quite interesting. When you start watching at those stars, could be angels, light bearers. And he brought out the grove. Something wrong with grove. Yet every Catholic church has a grove. Some Baptist churches too. We, we heard about a college one time that they go out, that there's this one class, they go out in the courtyard and there's plants. And they got, I think, it's, I think he said there's a statue of the 12 disciples. What are you doing? And then some churches, they got their, their church sign and it's, it's in between bushes. Your pastor is telling me that he does not know what his Bible means. That's almost bad. You know, you want me to come to your church? Don't say Merry Christmas. Because I know you don't know Bible. From the house of the Lord. Look at that. That robe is in the house of the Lord that he is at right now. He is at the, he has called everybody to the house of the Lord. Come on, come on, elders. Come on, people. Come on, priests. Come on, high priest. All right, we're going to dedicate ourselves to God right now. They stand up. I don't know which way he's standing, but let's say he's turned around and looked at the people. He's turned around and said, that's got to go, 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 that's got to I mean, get rid of it. We want a revival in America, but the Constitution says every religion has a right. Then you ain't going to get that revival. God said get rid Now, it's not for the Christians to do. I am not to go burn down churches. I am not to go knock heads off statues. Romans 13, and what Peter writes, in, uh, I think it's 2 Peter, you're right, that's the government's job to do it, not ours. We're, like I preached this morning, we're to go out and preach the gospel. The government, the king, is to say, that needs to go, that needs to go. And you can't do that when you've only had one Baptist president in the United States. Go check the history. Only one time of the president, and I don't know his name. Sorry, I don't. I should. One time in the candidacy of all the presidents in the White House, only one president ever said there'll be no liquor, no booze in this place. I ought to know his name. Man, I should get to know his name. Oh, he's one of those it, it, it's a It's a weird... And they said that his presidency was boring and all that. Could be Harrison. I said I'll have to look that up. That, that, that's an important name to know. But you realize since we had the first president of the United States, there has been no true revival in America, the Great Awakenings. Now, you, if you go to uh, Waikiki, whatever that encyclopedia, there are revivals mentioned, but they are panty waste. They don't do nothing. 
So he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem. So he takes it out. Our Lord God and Savior was killed outside of Jerusalem. Unto the book Kindron and burned it at the brook Kindron. Now, can you just imagine? Now, let's, you got to look at the Bible. You got to read the Bible in true reality. He walks into the house of the Lord. He grabs all these bushes. He's carrying these bushes to the river and he starts burning them. He has a brush fire. That's what's going on. And stamped it small to powder. That guy is burning the bushes and he's doing a dance on the, on the bushes. You ain't not going to use these things anymore. I am going to put this stuff into hell. Exodus 32.20. Exodus 32.20. Exodus 32.20. Now Manasseh got rid of it. Amen, glory to God, but he did not get completely rid of it. Exodus 32.20. And we ran across this the other night. Exodus 32, verse 20. We had a problem in Exodus 32. We have a cow that does not know how to spell chicken. And he took of the calf, that's a cow, golden arches, burger, uh-huh, you can call it Wendy's. He took of the calf which they, steakhouses, which they made. He burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water. He got to make you think, is this what Josiah is thinking of? It sure does match. Would you even think to maybe think that the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, the five books of, of, of Moses, would you maybe think that Exodus 32 came up in the reading to the people? Or at least Josiah has read Exodus 32, and he said, you know what, I'm going to do what Moses did. I'm burning. And that was a calf. This is a, this is a bunch of butchers. Moses had the burning bush that did not consume. Josiah had the burning bush, and he let it consume. And then he stomped it. You ain't using this bush no more. He cast the power there upon the graves of the children of the people. Here, here's your gods, you, you dead people. What are they going to do you? You ready for another one? Verse 7. Who are we? The Bible's up to date. And this happened, I remember, a few years after I got saved. When AIDS became, it wasn't really big, it's still a big thing, but when they changed it from GRID, gay-related immune deficiency, they made it AIDS. Can't single out the, the gay people. He break down the houses of the Sodomites. That's not going to happen in this world today. They're protected by law. And today, watch, watch, watch. They were by the house of the Lord. At the temple site in Jerusalem, there were houses around the temple of the queers, of the Sodomites, living there. You know where they are today? They are in the churches today. The churches are allowing them. The churches say, all are welcome. No, don't build a house around the, around the church. Come on into the church. We'll, we'll protect you from those Bible thumpers who don't know any better. He broke down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord. No conviction. Open sin. Ready? Where the women, you got to watch out for women. They got a problem with religion in the Bible. I didn't say all women. Jezebel. There are women baking cakes to the queen of heaven. The Bible speaks about there will be women and children leading this world before the Antichrist comes. 
The women were hang wove hangings. They, they made hangings. So when I got saved, around the period that I got saved, there was this national AIDS quilt that went all around America for AIDS. And they would stop off at different places, and they would, they would attach to this quilt hangings and wovens for gay people. There it is in the Bible. But watch, we're not done. They wove hangings for the grove. There's that grove. That's why you got rid of it. Hangings. Do you know where else you saw the word hangings? Is that not the description of what Moses built for the tabernacle? The hangings. They made an artificial temple. They made an artificial Noah, I mean Noah, Moses tabernacle. They had their own church by the church, the temple in the Old Testament. They had a carbon copy of what God was, but their own way. He brought out all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burnt incense. I don't know how he would defile those high places, but I could think of some cruel things mm -hmm. he would do. There were trees and rocks there. I get this picture, a particular expression I can use that comes from the Bible, and it won't be wrong. Pissing against the wall. I could just, and hold on, guys, I got to go doo doo. I mean, Jezebel was, was described to become dog dung. Oh, hold on, guys, wait a minute. All right, everyone, come around me. Ready? About face. Okay, I'm done. Next. Oh, that was a little, I, I, I think I, 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 that's the only way I can think of defiling it. Where the priest had burned the incense from Geba to Bathsheba. Bathsheba's all the way down south. And break down the high places of the gates that were in the entries of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city. Here's a guy, here's a guy who's in charge of the city, and he's got all this nonsense going on at his gate. The gates were the city hall were. Where we're on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. That's not the place to have this. Look where Jerusalem's at. Remember, at this time, Israel has gone into captivity for all this that Josiah is cleaning up. You want a revival? God is not going to bless America with this crap that's in America today. You got people every weekend who are eating and drinking the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ, and they will not tell you that is figurative. They will tell you it's literal. Active cannibals. And where the Bible says before the law, during the law, and after the law, that the eating of blood is abomination. And I said today, I said, you're going to call yourself a Christian being a Catholic where your church killed Christians? Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem. I wonder why they didn't come. Bad priest, they didn't go to church. <laughs> but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. You find in the, in the New Testament, Paul writes, what do you have with the, with the infidel and the believer? What concord do you have with Christ and be there? It is. There is the Old Testament thing of Christians getting together with non Christians and having fellowship. That's the church today. There are churches, and you ask my wife, we were in one in Connecticut. They had the Lord's Supper, and there were people preparing to go for a beer party afterwards, and they all partook of the Lord's Supper. Unleavened bread. There it is. Saved and lost. In B.C. 624. They defiled Tophet. Now that's the only place that word shows up. Tophet. And let's look at what Tophet is. It is a word that means, ready? Drum roll, please. 
It means drums. Which is in the valley of the children of Hemen. You'll see that a lot. That no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire of Molech. That's where Molech is. He's in a tuffet. Why would you have drums? To drown out the crying and screaming of mothers and babies being thrown into this cast iron or, or this, this brazen, whatever this metal image is, this idol, where the hands are made to throw children into the fire of his belly. And I'm not doing this as a pun, but I'm talking about heartburn. And the fuel of the heartburn of this belly of this God is children. You want to fight abortion? This is post-abortion. The children have been born. He took away the horses that the kings of Judah have given to the son. That's Apollo. Apollo rides on his chariot in the morning, comes up in the east, and rides across the sky to the west and goes to sleep. That's our space program that supposedly went to the moon. The early forms of the space program of America were named for Apollo, the great sun worship. This great, he's also called, in the Bible, Baal. And those horses, if I can cleanly say, were used not for riding, but for sexual pleasures. Bestiality was against the law. And at the entering of the house of the Lord, <laughs> they're doing all this at the temple. So don't be surprised when you go by a church, they got a bounce houses, and they got a car wash, and they got a carnival, and they got all the junk. B.C. 624. And God disapproves of our, our vacation Bible with all this junk we got. Josiah is getting rid of that junk to get right before God. Want a revival? Get rid of the junk. There it is. Kitty rides and, and uh, with the church in Norwich we had, they, they would have a, uh, a pet show and all that. There, there were churches in, in Connecticut, you could bring your dogs and your cats and your pets and they would bless them. I suppose somebody brought a snake too. The house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech. The chamberlain, that's the first time that word shows up, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. Look at, he, you ain't going to worship this stuff no more. I'm destroying it. And like, like my wife said the other night, when she got right with the Lord, serving the Lord, she said, you know, I want to be clean. We had ourselves a big burning party. And when we got up the next morning, we looked at that, that, that fire pit. It was ooey gooey. No one's going to use that. Glory to God. I didn't do that. I was foolish. I had someone sell my stuff. Lord, forgive me. If that's not under the blood, Lord, I ask you to put it under the blood now. Burning stuff. A church should have at least once a year a good burning. If people are getting saved in their church and people have been baptized in their church, you ought to have at least once a year a good burning. If you're a right church and you're dedicated to God. I think some churches have yard sales. Uh-huh. What kind of stuff they have in those? I want to have Christmas stuff. And the altars. Oh, <laughs> That were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz. You remember, he was a, he was a king that was meddling with Israel, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord. So see, he got rid of it, but it wasn't gone. Amon brought it back out. If Manasseh had burnt it like Josiah burnt it, like like Moses burnt it, there would be no bringing those things out. Did the king beat down? <laughs> he to see him with an axe and, and I mean just this is the king. This is not servants of the king. The king is striking the match. He's beaten down and break them down from thence. Cast the dust of them. Look how angry he got with it. 
He didn't burn it, but what did the end result of these things become? They became dust. <laughs> that guy did what electric uh, drills and electric skill saw and electric saws would do. A chainsaw would do. That guy did without the gas and without the electricity. He turned it into dust. That guy operated as a lumber mill into the Brook Kindrome. That's what Moses did with that. Now, some people may you're going to hear, oh, he's bad in our church. He, uh, look, I'm just reading the Bible. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, they were not yet in Jerusalem, but they were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption. Imagine, here's a mountain called Corruption in Jerusalem. Here are other people's religion and other people's churches. What do you think Jesus Christ is going to do when he comes back? And he finds a religious church. In fact, the earthquake is going to destroy them. All. But what's he going to do? He's going to destroy them. You think he's going to keep a church that's been evil and wicked? He's going to do exactly what Josiah is a type of Jesus Christ. Which Solomon, the king of Israel, had builded... For Ashtoreth, there's the honey pie of Baal. How long has been Solomon been dead? And look, his gods, his buildings for his wives are still there. They were worshiping the sun, there's Baal. Worshiping the moon, there's Ashtoreth. You know what Ashtoreth, you know what Ashtoreth she, she has other names of identity. She's called Ishtar. And on the statue of Ishtar, trying to be clean, it's not Easter eggs, it's boobies. She's the spring god, is. And she becomes impregnated by Tammuz. And nine months later, she gives birth to a, a god. She becomes the mother of God. She becomes the queen of heaven. She has now the name of Mary. And she has a baby. And it's not Jesus. And that celebration of her pregnancy is called Esther. After Esther. And the date of her son's birth is December 25th. They're both on the equinox. Astrid, the abominations of Zidonians. And Chemich, that's another false god, the abomination of the Moabites. And Milcom, that's another famous god, of the abomination of the children of Naaman. Did the king defile? Oh, <laughs> imagine what he did there. Ooh. His great, 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 great grandpa made all this stuff, and great, 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 great grandson comes up. <laughs> And those gods did nothing to, to uh, Josiah. They didn't strike down fire. He did not burn up himself. And we're still going on. And he break in pieces the images and cut down the groves. He, he made, this guy's a grove killer. And filled their places with the bones of men. That's one of the ways he's defiling. He's taking their own men. He's taking their own priests. He's going into their cemeteries. He's, he's digging up their bodies and throwing their dead carcasses onto that mess. What does the law say about the bones of dead men? It says you're unclean. You can't touch them. He's defiled it with the law. There's been a lot of red law read by Josiah. He has taken also into account the law says if you touch a, 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 a dead bone, or any bone is dead, if you, touch, if you touch a bone of a dead man, you're unclean. He's made him unclean. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel and the high place which Jeroboam the son of Nebat, uh-oh, uh -oh, uh -oh, I haven't heard his name in a while. Bethel. That's where Jacob met God for the first time. 
That's where he said the house of God. That's where the, the ladder that the angels were coming down and up. Who made Israel the sin. Had made both that altar and the high place. He break down and burned the high place. And stamp it small to powder. And burn the grove. You ain't going to use this place no more. Josiah is, can I say, on fire for the Lord? Can you just picture God in heaven? Go, boy. Go. And none of the gods are plaguing Josiah. And as Josiah churned himself, he spied the sepulchers that were there in the mount of Bethel and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers. <laughs> he's taking these dead bones, he scattered them and burned them upon the altar. These guys were worshiping false gods of Jeroboam. He's taking their bones and burning their bones. They've been dead, but he's doing a cremation after death, after burial. And polluted it. According to the word of the Lord. Which the man of God proclaimed. Who proclaimed these words. Let's go to 1 Kings 13. We may have forgot this. But 1 Kings 13. First Kings chapter 13. Verse 2. But we'll do verse 1. Ready? Verse 1, 13, 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah, by the word of the Lord, unto Bethel. That's where we just left off. And Jeroboam, there he is. Jeroboam made Israel to sin. By the altar to burn the incense. There's an altar. We just left off with an altar. And he cried against the altar, the prophet that we're talking about now, in the word of the Lord and said, Oh, altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah. Now, let's mark here. This date says B.C. 975. We're reading 1 Kings. B.C. 975. Second King says B.C. 624. 351 years before the man is born, God sent the prophet into that man of David, who's going to be king, Josiah by name, by name, upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and the men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. We are seeing 1 Kings 13, 1 and 2 being fulfilled in our eyes in 2 Kings chapter 23. And let me show you something. We go back to 2 Kings 23. Verse 16, at the end of the verse. According to the word of the Lord, which the man of God proclaimed, we just read that, 1 Kings 13, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, this is Josiah, what title is this, what title is that that I see? See, it's an inscription. The man of the city told him, it is the sepulcher of the man of God, 1 Kings 13, which came from Judah, 1 Kings 13, and proclaim these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. 1 Kings 13. Josiah had no idea what he was doing when he'd done what he'd done of the prophecy of that man in 1 Kings 13. He said, he's, he's taking all these dead bodies. He's burning them, according to 1 Kings 13. He comes up to the one, he says, what's that say? And a man who knew the Bible, who is speaking by God from God, he said, Josiah, yes, sir. That man prophesied your name 
When we get back to the kingdom, when we get the rolls of the books, I will show you. Your name was prophesied before you were born. I forget. How many years did I say? 300 something? Over 300 years before this date, King, your name, your name. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people. Thou shalt call his name John. Thou shalt call his name Isaac. You, Josiah, were prophesied by that, that man right there who's buried there. Remember, that's the prophet that said, you know, God told him, don't go back to Bethel, and he did by the lion prophet, and then, the, you know, the lion ate him or killed him. And the lion and ass was standing there inside the road with the dead prophet. That's that same man, First Kings 13. When the false prophet came, he said, well, he carried him home. He said, bury him in my sepulcher. That's First Kings 13. And he said, let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. That's the false prophet. I don't know why Josiah didn't left those bones. And all the houses, also the high places. Look at these high places. They got houses, they got people, they got altars, they got incense, they got Baal. Which the kings of Israel, north, had made to provoke the Lord to anger. That's why they're going. Josiah took away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. Josiah just went into Israel, and he's starting to clean Israel out now. We ain't going to just clean Judah. We're going to clean the land that God gave to our fathers. And he slew all the priests in the high places. That's what the law told him to do. That were there upon the altars, and burned men's bone upon them to defile it, and return to Jerusalem. And we're going to stop there. Look at this man. Look at the action he's doing for God. Now that's a revival. But in a few more chapters, we're going to see Jerusalem's going to start failing. Sorry to say. And we'll close there with Josiah. Great cleanup.